say gold hides in silence, but nature whispers clues to those who know how to listen. Look closely at the way a river bends, the texture of the gravel beneath your feet, or the sudden stillness in the current. To most, it's just water and stone, but to a trained eye, it's a treasure map written in earth in erosion. Gold doesn't appear randomly. It travels, settles, and gets trapped, guided by nature's hand. Rivers, more than any other force, are gold's delivery system. And hidden in their patterns are the telltale signs of something precious waiting below the surface. So what exactly should you be looking for? Let's follow the current. Inside bends of rivers. As water flows around a curve, it accelerates on the outside and slows on the inside. That deceleration is critical. Heavier material, like gold, drop out of suspension and settle where the water can't carry them anymore. Inside bends become natural gold traps. Look for compacted gravels along the inside curve. If it's hard to dig, that's a good sign. Layers of ancient floods may be hiding coarse flakes or even nuggets just a few inches below the surface. Natural obstructions, boulders, roots, and ledges. A single boulder in a stream can act like a gold magnet. When fast water hits a solid object, it slows down behind it, causing heavies to drop. Check behind boulders, under tree roots that jut into the stream, or along exposed bedrock shelves. Sometimes the smallest riffle or lip in the rock can catch gold that's been riding the river for hundreds of miles. One of the best indicators for gold is the presence of black sand. Dense minerals like magnetite and hematite that behave similarly to gold in moving water. If you're panning and seeing thick streaks of black sand in the bottom of your pan, you're in the right neighborhood. But remember, black sand alone isn't proof. It's a hint. The real reward is often deeper or just inches away. Modern rivers often shift away from older gold-bearing paths. Look for terraces, elevated flat areas above the current river. These are signs of previous floodplains or ancient watercourses. Prospectors who ignore high ground miss some of the richest pockets left untouched for centuries. Listen to the land. Look for rounded gravel high up, compacted layers, or even plant-free zones that hint at unusual mineral content. Exposed bedrock and cracks. Gold loves bedrock. When all lighter materials wash away, gold often works its way down through the soil and gravel, settling into cracks, crevices, and depressions in the exposed bedrock. These natural troughs are nature's sluice boxes. Use a small crevice tool or even your fingers. Anything trapped in those narrow lines could be a remnant of ancient floods and hidden deposits. Rivers don't just drop gold anywhere. They leave it in lines. These pay streaks can be traced by identifying consistent layers of coarse gravels, black sands, and heavies. If you find color in your pan, test a few feet upstream and downstream. Try to locate the streak's direction. But we're not done yet. Rivers hold secrets far more subtle and far more profitable. If you've ever walked beside a river and felt something beneath your boots, you might have been standing just inches from forgotten treasure. Let's go deeper, because the most overlooked signs are often the most profitable. Sudden drop zones or plunge pools, where the river plunges over ledges, into holes or sharp drops, gold tends to fall out of suspension. These plunge zones act like natural gold vaults. Look underneath those waterfall edges and sharp changes in elevation. Beneath that bubbling surface lies gravel-packed hollows. They may look unassuming, but they're time capsules of ancient floods and trapped gold. 
Even shallow plunge pools carved into bedrock can surprise you with fine gold or even chunky nuggets nestled in their crevices. Rust-colored stains or iron indicators. If the rocks are blushing red or orange, don't ignore them. That rust you see might be more than just oxidation. Iron-rich minerals like limonite or hematite often appear in the same places where gold once ran deep. These stains point to mineralized zones upstream and possibly gold-bearing quartz veins that are breaking down slowly over time. Where iron bleeds, gold may be quietly bleeding out with it. Ever noticed how water doesn't flow in a straight line? It curves, it twists, it dances. And in those river twists, especially near uneven bottoms, shallow shelves, or submerged rocks, natural riffles form. Water slows behind them, heavies drop, and gold, it stays. Eddies, those swirling reverse currents along riverbanks, are perfect gold catchers. Quiet, undisturbed, ready for someone who knows how to look. Quartz veins and float rocks nearby. If you're seeing loose angular quartz rocks, especially stained with reddish iron, you might be near a gold source. These are called float rocks, pieces of quartz that broke off upstream from a larger quartz vein. And when quartz breaks, sometimes it lets go of gold. Watch for them along gravel bars, hillsides, or even resting quietly in riverbanks. Because they don't float, they travel with purpose. Sudden soil color. Changes beneath your boots, the soil may shift from brown to orange, from soft to sticky clay, or even to a bluish hue. That change isn't random. It often signals a change in composition, a shift in sediment, a pocket where heavier minerals like gold might have collected, or where the river dropped its secret payload long ago. Sometimes the best gold sits just below an odd patch of unnatural soil. Gold fever isn't new. Look around. Are there old stacked rocks, shovel marks, exposed bedrock with strange notches? These aren't coincidences. They're messages from past prospectors, ones who came close but left the prize behind. Modern technology and a sharp eye can finish the work they started. What they missed, you might find. The river doesn't lie. It simply hides. Every bend, every ripple, every stone is a sentence in nature's language. And gold is the punctuation. Learn to read it, and you'll discover that fortune doesn't always glitter on the surface. Sometimes it sleeps beneath inches of gravel, in the hush of an eddy, or the crack of an ancient stone. And if you've ever stood at a river's edge and felt something whisper from beneath your feet, you were right to listen. Because in the world of rivers and gold, silence is a signal. Until next time, stay sharp, stay curious, and keep exploring with EGS Pro.